I'm at the Mammoth Yosemite Airport near Mammoth Lakes, California, which is located 30 miles north of Bishop, California, and three hours south of, of Lake Tahoe on U.S. Route 395, less nestled in the uh, beautiful eastern Sierras. I'm here to talk to Regional Air or uh, Mammoth Yosemite Airport manager uh, Bill Manning about the current state, state of affairs of the expansion of the uh, Mammoth Yosemite Airport. We're going to talk about a brief history of the airport, uh, what has led up to the expansion of the airport, what in the community has led up to the uh, the, w the willingness uh, of the community and the air carriers to provide service to this airport, as well as uh, some of the roadblocks that has been that have been met uh, in leading up to the expansion of the uh, of the airport. And I'll finalize it by uh, by asking him to look into his crystal ball and and uh, and tell us where he sees the airport in uh, in five years from now. So with that, let's go talk to Bill Manning. All right, Bill. Thanks for uh, giving me the time to uh, pick your brain a little bit about the uh, the Mammoth Yosemite Airport. Is that the official name That's of this the place? Official title. Okay. Um, first off, why don't we start off? Uh, just give me a quick, you know, thirty-second history of the place, if you can. Okay. It was a, an army outlying army field back in World War II. Uh, since that time, there's been a number of expansions. It's gone through an, a series of ownerships also. It's been owned by the Forest Service at one time, then sold to the county, then back to the Forest Service, and then a private development group, and they ran it in, in the uh, early 80s. It went back again to the uh, Mono County, and then it was um, sold to the town of Mammoth Lakes in 1992, and the town's maintained ownership since then. Okay. Uh, I noticed the airport uh, was granted a couple of uh, airport improvement uh, program grants by the FAA in 2004, one for uh, acquiring land for approaches and acquiring snow removal equipment for uh, $450,000. What's the status of these projects? <laughs> a, a little complex. We, we, we purchased the snow removal equipment, uh, one loader. We purchased uh, the ARF vehicle, a new ARF vehicle to take us up to a Class B designation. We've not purchased the land through LADWP, but before that we had a $28 million grant through the FAA through a letter of intent. Uh, we lost that, that money in, uh, when the FAA lost a lawsuit with the state attorney general. Right. So now we're trying to get back into the grant mode and start bringing in uh, new money. Okay. The second 2004 AIP grant was... Uh was for uh, close to $1.3 million to conduct an environmental study. Um, can you tell me about the history of, of, of that? You mentioned the, uh, the, the lawsuit. Right. And well, we did, uh, the town and the FAA did an environmental assessment and uh, EIR back in, that culminated in 2000. It was challenged by the state attorney general on the NEPA side. On the CEQA side, it was challenged by uh, the Sierra Club. Yeah, the, um, the FAA lost their court case in uh, the Ninth Circuit Court, which is a little telling, and the town prevailed in the CEQA case um, in, through the Court of Appeals. In the NEPA case, the judge directed that the FAA conduct an environmental impact statement which is the next level up from the environmental assessment if we were going to proceed with um, uh, proceed with the airport development, the expansion, mm -hmm. as we called it at the time. Yeah. What's the, the scope of the expansion? Should, should the next uh, environmental impact uh, study um, get, get approved and, and see feasible for the, the town of, of Mammoth Lakes? What, uh, what's, you know, what, what type of aircraft, what uh, carriers have seen interest? Well, a couple of years ago, we decided to revisit our plan. Our initial plan was to bring in American Airlines with 757s from Dallas and Chicago. Uh, that required 
uh, a runway expansion, a terminal expansion, those types of things. Obviously that got caught up in the uh, lawsuit and the environmental impact statement to follow. Two years ago, we started looking at revisiting what our air service program should look like. Uh, certainly the industry has changed since 9-11 and certainly the industry has changed with the advent of regional jets and point-to-point -point and that kind of thing is obviously more important to us. So we felt we could create a viable air service program through a regional concept as opposed to a hubs and spoke uh, type of program. Uh, since that time, uh, we've negotiated with, or I should say the ski area is going to subsidize the, the flights as negotiated with United and Horizon in particular, and it looks at this point that we're going to pursue a regional program with Horizon with uh, the Q400 turboprops. Starting out with a couple flights a day and uh, hopefully building up to about five or six flights a day within five years, markets being Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and the Bay Area. Because of the environmental hurdles that we've had, we're now doing a different EIS, if you will, actually on remodeling, remodeling the interior of this building. Strangely enough, the remodeling is going to cost about $850,000. At the end of the day, we'll spend about a million six on environmental work uh, to remodel a building, which seems a little out of whack, but that's kind of the way things are these days. And you mentioned the ski area. The main, main attraction uh, to this area is the outdoor recreation. The biggest contributor, of course, Mount, Mammoth Mountain Ski Resort, which attracts more than 1.5 million visitors each year. It's been re recently purchased by Starwood Capital. Um, they're also building a high-end, environmentally friendly nine-story hotel called The One. Uh, Weston is building a seven-story hotel. So all this points towards uh, inevitable expansion of, of the airport. Um, has has the airport sought funds from the FAA's Small Community Air Service Program? No. No? Any reason? We've not really been interested in pursuing that um, that funding mechanism with the uh, with the ski area subsidizing the, uh, the air service. That's not really been a requirement. We're hoping at the airport uh, to develop a hotel here or hopefully over the next, within the next five years should have been five years ago, and it's another story. Mm. But that would also allow the town, with the revenues from that hotel at the airport, to do our own subsidizing program through the spring, summer, and fall. Sure. So it, the, the, the small air carrier thing you're talking about has not really been right. on, our, on our radar. Okay. To wrap this up, uh, what's, Bill, what's your, your forecast? What, if you can look in the future, and, and you've mentioned five, ten years down the road, but uh, as far as the environmental uh, aspect goes, do you, do you foresee this getting passed? Do you, do you foresee any any problems with uh, you know certain? Uh, what's your biggest hurdle? I guess is what I'm trying to ask uh, to the environmental uh, impact. Well, I think the most important thing is to get service started. I think the town is an environmentally friendly town. If you look at the things we we focus on, pedestrian friendly and. <laughs> Uh, transit in the town, and as you mentioned, the green hotels, those types of things. Um, I think we line up to a great degree with uh, uh, what goes on with the Sierra Club and what their goals are. They match very nicely. We believe that uh, bringing people in by air is a lot more environmentally friendly than bringing people Absolutely. up 395 yep. uh, from Los Angeles. On the other hand, the environmental groups really are concerned about sprawl in the local area that if air service starts that will look like Vail or Aspen and all sure. the down valley types of things. Sure. We don't see that happening. The, uh, the county here is 98% public land, so there simply aren't places for sprawl to happen. So it's our belief that once we get the uh, air service program going that um, the environmental groups will see that it is beneficial. It's a good thing as opposed to a bad thing. and mm -hmm. It'll take its own course and grow grow its own way. Sure. Great. Well, thanks, Bill. Appreciate the, the time welcome. today. Now that we've talked to Bill Manning of the Mammoth Yosemite Airport, hopefully we have a better understanding of where not just the airport stands in its quest for uh, air service and uh, for future expansion and development, but also what other airports in the state of California and also the nation have to deal with when uh, when wanting to expand to a commercial airport.